Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with the favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I am really excited to introduce to you, I'm going to put on my anchorman voice, she's a big deal. Krista Mayshore from kristamayshore.com. If you're not familiar with Krista Mayshore, she has been in the top 1% of realtors nationwide for 20 years. She's personally sold over 2,300 homes and averages 100 homes a year. She is now in the top 1% of coaches nationwide, but she is the author of four, not three, not two, four best-selling books focusing on digital marketing. She's been featured in Forbes, Inman News, The Wall Street Journal, NBC, Fox, and more. She's spoken on stages of 10,000 plus alongside Grant Cardone, Russell Brunson, Tony Robbins. Krista <laughs> recently took her new coaching business from zero to $25 million in just under four years. She's a big deal. She's a recipient of seven Two Comma Club Awards and one Two Comma Club X Award and done two Triple C Award from Click Funnels. Chris Mayshore, welcome. Oh, I think you're having me. I think you're the one person that talks faster than me. And those awards are not updated. We have 11 Two Comma Club Awards. We have two 10X Awards. We're just about ready to hit our 50 million mark. So you're, so you're in 50 million. So Chris, let's just rewind the tape. Yes. And how did you go from being a realtor to being one of the most badass digital marketers on the planet? <laughs> You're so funny. Um, I just love you, by the way. You have the best energy. And I, I love when people tell me that. Just, I just, you're great. If you're right, anyways. Um, you know, I was, a, uh, I used to be a teacher and I love teaching and coaching people and helping people. It's kind of my nature, obviously, being coming from a teaching background. And I had, um, been, you know, been at, averaging 135 homes a year. Uh, if you take you know, how many years I was actually um, a full time agent. And um, I decided, like, I have mastered this. I'm really good at it. I did it in a very non traditional way. And I thought, let me teach other people how to do it. So I um, decided to open up my coaching company and to teach real estate agents and, and lenders. Now I'm actually coaching other entrepreneurs on my business model. Um, and they're doing amazing. So it's, yeah, it's been, it's been great. It's, uh, it's just different. You know, I feel like for so long, agents have been taught, you know, to do things like open houses and cold calling and door knocking and times have changed. And it's unfortunate that the real estate industry has not really adapted They're there. I hear things like, well, I think it's time I should start doing video. I think it's time I should start thinking about funnels. It's like, no, it's been time. It's been like 10, 15 years <laughs> time. Right. Uh, right. So, and, and for, you know, you think about like the, um, the travel agent is pretty much gone, but not the travel agents that specialize, right? There's still travel agents that specialize and that have adapted and, and changed. Um, you, you know, Blockbuster, you never thought would have gone out of business and now they, they're completely extinct. I think there's one Blockbuster and there was like thousands of them because they didn't evolve and adapt in time. And so, you know, uh, I know right now is a really difficult time in real estate. You know, interest rates have just gone above seven percent, and agents we talk to agents that haven't sold houses for months and months, and so a lot of people are backing up, up. But if you talk to any of the most successful companies during times like this, is when they really doubled down. They went all in on their marketing, and because. And, you know, this is a good, sorry, I'm talking too much, but you think about Pepsi, right? Right. Back during the recession, Pepsi was like the number one brand. And when, when the, when the, um, uh, the recession happened, Pepsi like pulled back Well, Coca-Cola went all in, they doubled down, tripled down and Pepsi nearly went bankrupt. And I think it did go bankrupt back then. And they even actually went to Coca-Cola and asked Coca-Cola to buy them out. And they said, no. Coca-Cola became global at that time and dominated the space because they did the opposite of what, of what Pepsi did. So right now, more than ever, real estate agents and lenders and quite frankly, any entrepreneur needs to double down on their marketing and fertilizing and watering their gardens so that they can position themselves as the authority. I, I totally agree with you. And I think it's, and I'm, I'm thinking back to, let's just say 2008. Right. Think of all the opportunities that happened in that great recession and the people that were fear based and held back. And then there are the people like, oh, now I'm buying up homes. Yeah. Now is the time. Right. Um, and it's in the same mentality can be done entrepreneurially in when there's, there's a slowdown. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunities in your in your space, because 
most entrepreneurs are going to start looking at the, okay, where can I cut, right? And the, the contraction as far as thinking, okay, this too shall pass. Now is the time to double down on the investment to really help grow when the inevitable upswing occurs and I'm there and I'm well positioned and I've taken care of my clients and my customers and the marketplace and added more value during this tough time than than ever. But yeah. Krista, how how do you think about it as far as how do you get someone to 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 switch that piece? Because there is the logistical, I don't have the money because the cash flow is starting to dry up now. Mm-hmm. So I, I it, it's a business, right? If you think right. of any business, I think I think, and I'm I'm probably not saying this correctly, I think it's around $1.5 million to invest in McDonald's. And the average McDonald's person makes $150,000 a year profit, right? But most businesses aren't profitable for years and years. And, and it's because they, you know, I know someone that spent $275,000 on a portable coffee, like cart type of a thing to sell a, you know, $5 cup of coffee. It's an investment. Real estate is no different. In fact, you know, as a teacher working for six years, I made with a master's degree, I made $60,000 a year. My best month in real, my best month in real estate, I made $360,000 in a month in gross commissions earned. But it was only because I positioned myself as different. And here's the thing. If you don't have the money now, you're never going to have the money. I have not lived at home since I was 13. So I, well, I ended up in juvenile hall, a group home, and then a foster home. And when I turned 18, my foster parents, who were really good to me, but the money ran out and they said, hey, you've got to you've got to move out. So what I did was I got loans. I put myself through college. I made it work, right? I'm not saying, it. The, oh, it's all about me. But I mean, imagine foster kids. Most foster kids end up on the streets. They end up on drugs, pregnant. Like it's, I think less than 1% of co- people go to college uh, that are foster kids. And I, you have to just make it work. You have to, even if it means getting loans. I mean, marketing and innovation is the backbone behind any business. And so when the market crashed back in 2008, I remember um, being a little bit ahead in the game and realizing, okay, something is not right here. How is it that from one day to the next, a house can sell for $100,000 more on the exact same street, the exact same model, something is wrong. And so I started, I got my short sale credentials. I started reaching out to asset managers. I flew and invested in meeting asset management companies, sending them packages that says, you know, let me knock your, let me rock your socks off. And I put a thing of pop rocks and socks on there on a package with my, all my, how I knew how to do BPOs and my, my short sale credentials and all that. And I had 13 different asset management companies that I landed because I was I thought ahead, I invested in, in the money, I took the risks. And you know, my best year in real estate was 169 homes I sold during the short sale as a solo agent with another with an assistant and a transaction coordinator. And I'm telling you this again, not to brag, but it's like you have to be willing to invest in being different, invest in marketing. And right now it's there's never been a better time because um, I'm, I'm in a mastermind group. One of, one of my students is in a mastermind group, different from mine. And he said that, well, somebody named a stat that uh, 50,000 agents left the business last month. They expect another you know, 500,000 agents to leave the business and because everyone is getting scared, right? But now is the time when you want to invest in, in, in people knowing you. Uh, attention is currency. And the more attention that you can get, you need to relate that to money, right? And the more, and right now people aren't doing it. So it's a great time to be talking about people still need to buy. People are dying. They're getting divorced. They're moving. They're having kids. They're relocating. All of those things are still happening. I mean, I have a student right now who's been in the business for three years. He has 34 transactions in escrow right now. Of those 34, like 31 are personally his. He's got a small team, but he does, you know, 99% of the business. It, the pe- transactions are still happening. You just need to get more market share. You need to take a hold of more of it. And the way to do that is not by retracting. The way to do that is by investing more. Like I'm literally asking myself, how can I invest to get more eyes on me? I just need to get, because I'm, I'm literally doing the same thing right now. Because real estate has been harder because of the recession, because of interest rates and all that, my sales and my coaching have declined. In fact, the past two months are the are the first two months that we didn't do over a million dollars in uh, from a, a virtual event. We averaged around we were averaging around one point five five million um, on average if you take our sales over the past you know twenty eight months. Um, and now it's almost been cut in half. So what am I saying? Like my profits have drastically declined. They're almost like almost like 
not even really making money, but I'm like, how can I get more attention? What I need to do is now I need to, I need to fill up the events more. I need to put more butts in seats so I can convert more. I need to spend more to make more. I'm not thinking of the opposite. And that's how wealthy people are. That's how wealthy people think, you know? Um, in fact, Warren Buffett is one of the wealthiest men in the world. Not sure if he still is, but he says that during the time of a recession, your best investment is on is in your business and in your own education and, and bettering yourself. That's your best hedge against a recession, inflation, interest rates, and anything, because they can't take that away from you. So um, I think that's why I've always been successful is because I've always been willing to invest, even when I jumped out of college, you know, out of my foster home, had to invest in getting student loans. And I and I had to pay them all back. It's not like the kids nowadays, they let the loans go. I had to pay every single dime back. Um, and because of being willing to invest in learning how to, you know, do be a digital, a master digital marketer, um, quite frankly, I would say I'm probably the best digital marketer in real estate in the world. I don't think anyone has done what I've done as far as the digital marketing space in real estate, um, but it's only because I invested in it. And because of that, I'm able to outlast these market chips. Well, Krista, the, you just dropped so many wisdom bombs <laughs> in, in that in that talk, but I, I want to go back and hear more about your story. I don't know why that was in the bio. Let's yeah. rewind a little farther back now. Yeah. And and how do you go from let's let's I mean, I'd make the argument that might be one of the toughest ways to grow up is yeah, so I in under, the foster system. Yeah, I'm very close to my parents now, but my mom was physically abusive, um, pretty, pretty violently, quite frankly. And so when I turned 13, I started running away. And so I was on the run for about a year on and off. They, they'd find me, I'd run away, find me, I'd run away until finally we broke the law. We ended up breaking into our eighth grade uh, PE locker room and stealing all the clothes because we didn't have any and stealing all their lunch money because we needed food. And we got caught. And that- now, how, how, Is this you and your siblings? This is me and my, one of my best friends who best I, friend. it was also in an abusive um, home. Okay. And so we ended up in juvenile hall. And um, then we stayed there. God, that was the scariest thing too. But I remember seeing this one girl literally take another girl's head and bash it into the porcelain, you know, toilet and blood and teeth were flying everywhere. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I don't belong here, which I didn't. I was a, I was a good kid. I was just in a bad circumstance. Right. And then I ended up um, going to a group home called Hidden Hills Group Home for Girls, where I spent 12 months there. It was like a, a, a group home for troubled girls. And then I, I, they sent me back home when there was still issues at home. So then I ended up going to a foster home. So I haven't lived at home since I was 13 and I just had to kind of figure it out. Um, and then I ended up um, meeting a, a husband and um, having two little girls. And when my daughters were uh, under two and under uh, just, just over four, I found out my husband at the time was having an affair and he ended up um, draining our bank accounts. And within a couple of weeks, I had this, this new girlfriend that he had was picking up my daughter's on Thanksgiving to take them away for Thanksgiving. And I, I just was so low. And um, that's the year I sold 69 houses because I was just, you know, people say you, you really need to have a strong why. I can't tell you how strong that is. That's so true because because of the fact that I was in the group home and the foster home and the physical abuse, my goal was to no matter what, make it in real estate. And so I, um, I left teaching to be a stay-at-home mom because my daughter got sick. And then I ended up having to like dive right into real estate. And uh, it, yeah, yeah. My first year, I sold sixty nine houses, and I did it by being by having an, an absolute strong why. I wanted to keep my daughter safe in their home, and I wanted them to, you know, to do to be happy, you know. So that led that was the strong why behind that. And people always ask me, Krista, how did you do that? Like, how are you? How did you average one hundred and thirty five homes a year? And I'll tell you how. Is I looked outside of the real estate industry. To, to see what how I could utilize what other industries were doing and bring them into real estate, right? And I remember- Yeah, there's, there's a great book about that because called The Blue Ocean Strategy. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so you, Brown, yes. yeah so you blue oceaned it. T- completely, yeah. You know, like I started doing video. Um, I, I remember when the, when the real estate market got better. So mind you, I was selling REOs and foreclosures for like six years. Um, I had the HUD account, Wachovia, Greenberg Capital, Nation Rider Brokers, uh, Wells Fargo at all of them. And then all of a sudden the market got better. So all my accounts dried up. I went from like selling a hundred plus homes a year. And it was like, all of a sudden I had 12 assets. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I lost a listing. And the guy said, um, I called and said, hey, just checking in. And Kristen, we loved you. But the last guy called you a foreclosure queen. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am a foreclosure queen. Nobody knows who I am. I haven't been doing any marketing at all. 
So I started studying marketing and I decided like I was going to dominate two different neighborhoods. And I did that by sending out postcards in the mail every two weeks with the market update and what I call becoming a community market leader. Anything and everything that had to do with those communities, I would be talking about. And then I started driving traffic from Facebook ads with videos about the neighborhoods. And within a year, I was back up to over 100 homes a year. But it was completely like I was starting from scratch, right? But I did it not by doing the traditional things. Like people will do open houses and I'll go to talk to a homeowner and say, this is why you don't do an open house. People will say how great Zillow is. And I'll say, yes, Zillow is the number one website. But look, Zillow on the, on these 50 listings got, you know, 30 views, 100 views. I'm getting 170,000 views. Like I'm just showing them how different and unique I am. And when you can stand out and be very different and not do what everyone else is doing, that's when the money will come. And I think so many agents are just like robots. And it's not really their fault. They're not taught, right? We're taught how many square feet are in a mile. Who really cares? No one even knows that. It doesn't make a difference, at least for me. They're not taught how to run a business, how to be a marketer. And again, remember, marketing and innovation is the backbone behind any business. It doesn't really matter who you know. It matters who knows you. And once they know you and you have, you're having that attention in that currency, what value are you offering? And then once they raise their hand to want to work with you, what are you doing to position yourself before you even show up? Right. I call it winning before you arrive. Like it's I, I won before I arrived in a multitude of ways because, number one, I was marketing differently. Number two, I was like before I went on a listing appointment, they had, you know, a book that I had written. They had a marketing plan. They had a buyer's guide, a seller guide. They went, they watched a, you know, a 15 minute marketing video. I drove them to a funnel where I had talked all about their neighborhood and showed like a recent market update. I mean, I did everything I could to ensure that I was going to win and not leave it up to chance. And I would hear over and over and over again, Kristen, no one did what you did. Like I've heard it thousands of times, <laughs> literally thousands of times. And I'm like, I know that's why and you're going to give me a five-star review and you're going to hire me and you're going to pay me a full commission. They'd say, where do I sign? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of takeaways in, in your story. I think the, the the number one is you're right. It all starts with that big why. Mm -hmm. And you had a really big why. And I think and I still, I could still see today that still drives you. I'm sure it's evolved, oh, yeah. where it's not necessarily money problems that you need to solve now, but now you're giving back and in the giving of helping other people and how wonderful that feeling is. You are just getting more and more as well, even though ironically you don't need it. So <laughs> I mean, think you always need it, right? Like, yeah. I mean, People will say, I mean, I, I don't need, I mean, I can stop, I can retire right now and be able to do whatever I wanted. And, you know, um, we've got millions of dollars in the bank and we're doing great. But, and I, I think, yeah, I think we own like around 10 or 12 properties something like that. Um, all out, all out, right? Probably not the best idea, but I don't, I don't, I don't like having loans on my stuff. But, um, you know, I love, you know, Tony Robbins said that like once you get to a place in your life where you really are help, like giving back and helping people, that's when you're going to have a whole new level of things. And it's, it's really, really true. Like, I, I think I've had, you know, one of the best years of my life it, from my marriage to, um, to, to just business. And it's also been very challenging. I mean, when, when COVID hit my uh, coaching company was at a six week burn rate. I was, we were going to be out of business in six weeks if we didn't completely adapt and modify, like, you know, and I had to completely again at that time, change my entire coaching model. And I started doing uh, monthly virtual events and, because of that, we, you know, my first, my first month of changing my strategy, I did $1.3 million in a ge revenue generated for the, for the company. And like I said, from there, from that point forward, we did, you know, 26 months in a row, we did over a million dollars in just the past two months, it's changing. So today I was on a call with my team saying, okay, we've, you know, we've, we've been talking about this for a while. We've got to adapt. We've got to modify. The market is changing. How do we adapt? How do we change? We're actually, you know, we're making some big changes in our company right now. But I think that's a lot of companies don't do that. They kind of retreat right? They freeze and they freak out and then they flee, <laughs> freeze, right. freak out, flee, right? You've, you've got to, you know, adapt, adjust, modify, pivot. And I think that's, that's where a lot of people need to hear that right now. And, and no, like it's not the end of the world. It's just a matter of, you've got to figure out how to have your blue ocean and how to do things differently. And I would say marketing is, is key right now. I mean, if you've got to take a credit card out, do it. You know, I mean, I took credit cards out to, to, to learn, these strategies I had to, I sold one of my houses when COVID hit because I was, I needed to have money, you know, as a backup, you do what it takes, you know? Um, and thank goodness I did, because otherwise I would be a real estate agent again. And quite frankly, I don't ever want to have to do that again. <laughs> sure.
Sure. Yes. So tell us uh, a story about one of your coaching clients and what they were and what they were able to take the the knowledge that you gave them and change their lives. I've got so many and I'm not kidding about that. We, we really do have a pro- program that works, but unfortunately it, it work. Most people won't do the work, right? Like it's, they'll pay the money and they won't do the work and they'll, they'll, you know, they'll make the excuses of the market of interest rates in the recession, but we've taken brand new agents that have never sold a house before, literally. Um, and they've got nominated like Brufert best realtor of the, of the year. And they just, because perception is reality and making over a hundred thousand uh, dollars in the first quarter. We've taken eight agents that were doing a hundred plus homes, like Alicia Collins. She, she's in Wyoming. She was she was selling um, just over a hundred homes a year. We got her just we got her just under three hundred homes a year. So we have helped brand new agents dominate against and be t- become top producers and and beat top producers. And we've helped middle of the road agents that are like a good example is Lisa Grand. I, I love her. She is somebody who was um, actually in a really bad physical abusive relationship. And she gave us like her last $10,000 and we got her, you know, like 16 exit. And she was able to leave her husband. Now she's she's getting remarried um, and just completely changed her life. So, you know, and she invested. That was a scary thing for her to do, right? But she invested in, in really learning how to stand out what I call become a community market leader and um, utilize innovation and technology that we teach to just dominate her her. her we, we have hundreds of success stories. It's really new. But we, you know, our program, I take a lot of pride in it. I believe that I, I'm only successful if my students are. So we um, we are just as obsessed about getting them good results and offering them a lot of support and a lot of accountability and help. Um, so we're just as obsessed about getting them the results as we are about getting them into our program. In fact, I think I'm even more obsessed with getting them the results once they get in there. And that's that's something that you don't see very often, quite frankly. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely love it. Well, Krista, your mentorship has been invaluable. But now we're at the point in the podcast where I'm going to ask you for one more tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Yeah. So every single month we do a three-day virtual event. It's virtual. If they go to kristamayshore.com forward slash land geek, that's kristamayshore.com forward slash land geek, we will dive deep into digital marketing and becoming a community market leader, utilizing innovation and technology. And it's not hard. It's just different, right? We, we teach people a whole new way of thinking about their business. And it's exactly what they need right now to protect them, you know, to, to safeguard them against what's what's happening. So we are excited to, to have them come see us there. And I thank you so much, Mark, for allowing me the opportunity to do that. So I got to ask you, what is your tip? So, well, I I also want to tell people to go to kristamayshore.com forward slash land geek. But I I did recently start an interesting book called Nar Country by Stephen Kotler. I don't know if you're familiar with Stephen Kotler. He wrote Bold in Abundance with Peter Diamandis. He's he's just a really interesting dude. But um, as I'm aging, he's also aging. He's older than me, but he's doing things uh, to age well. Ooh. And and it has done some studies and uh it's a really interesting book. I've just started it, but What's I'm it really enjoying it. NAR Country, G-N-A-R Country. Oh, G okay, perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that look. Good. So that, that'll be my tip of the week. I want to just thank the listeners. Uh remind you that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Go up with Scott Todd as your Sherpa who's done it thousands of times. I know what you're thinking. That tuition, it's not going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed. You're going to make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. The landgeek.com forward slash training. And please just do us a little favor. Follow, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. That way, Krista will come back because if she looks at the reviews, she's like, oh, you suck. Not coming back. You have no <laughs> reviews. Uh, so do it selfishly for you, but it also helps us. And as a thank you, I will send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich. So please do it. All right, Krista, are we good? Mark, thank you so much for having me. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Let freedom ring. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training.
Let freedom ring.